executive session for the purposes of discussing discussing negotiation with non-union personnel. So I do. Yeah. I think we go back. So yes, first item on the agenda: public input. Seeing as we have no public, there is no public input. There is no input. And then second is student report, and I think this is our last meeting without a student representative, I yeah. believe. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't need, you don't need continued business. Mm -hmm. I'm not Continuing on the that. theme, we have no continued business. <laughs> so, doing pretty well. Okay. New business. Okay. So the first thing is 2019-2020 school committee goals. Mr. Bernard, are you commenting on this? or? I'd be happy to, Mr. Chairman. So I think um, <clears throat> given your uh, goals workshop in July, um, and affording me the... Uh, the good fortune of being the record keeper of your discussion for goals for 1920. I did my best to capture <laughs> that conversation. Um, you. So I think I think what what uh, what you have in front of you is a uh, is a recap um, of that goals workshop. And by the way, I want to thank you all for um, providing the thoughtful time to setting goals for yourselves. You know, the administration I think has has always appreciated. Um, the seriousness with which you approach um, your work as, as, as in support of the district. And so, um, you know, a lot of people don't see the behind the scenes type of work that goes on um, in a lot of aspects, but particularly with the goals workshop where you engage in thoughtful discussion with the administration and with each other around um, your, your desire to, um, toward, to meet our goal of continuous improvement. So thank you for that. So what you have in front of you is um, um, the, the outline of the goals in four key areas of leadership and governance, financial and asset management, the educational program for the district and family and community relations. And I think anybody that was to put the goals for 1920 um, aside, the 2018-19 goals, you would see that there are um, you know, some definite differences and, and some growth, and I think that's a good thing. It helps us to, to as an administration and as a district to be reflective about our work and, and our interactions with the committee to kind of be on the same page and work toward um, you know the same goals and I, I think that this this document as a draft um, you know does does go a long way in achieving that so um, I think it's up for you folks to to comment and, and if I missed anything I'm sorry please you know point that out and I can make the adjustment but otherwise I think what, what has typically happened is the committee adopts the goals um, so I mean I think a vote. This is Imbriano, anything? Um, I think part of it is attributed to the fact that it's a relatively new board and that our fearless leader here came up with a brilliant idea of bringing up new ideas um, above and beyond what was here and limited in the time to go over said um, the different, uh, I can't talk, the different uh, goals, the, the different separations, the finance versus leadership. Um, and I, we achieved it for the first time in six years in one setting, so kudos to Scott. I thought we did it in one setting last year, but anyway, it, it's, a good, it's a good accomplishment either way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think overall my comments are, I think we cleaned up some of the things that had been lingering for a while, and we did, I thought there was a great discussion. The one thing I liked, I feel like couple of years that I've been there, a lot of times it's one or two people talking and everybody else just sitting there. And I thought everybody participated, which is good, um, since we're all in this together. And I thought it was good that we had some discussion about some new ideas, some of which we're not gonna get to this year necessarily, but we're gonna at least start thinking about. So I think it's great. So um, did anybody notice any change? I'd ha I had no changes. I think Mr. Bernard caught everything. Um, any changes on that? And if not, can I have a motion to accept the 2019-2020 North Reading School Committee goals? I make motion to accept the 19, or sorry, the 2019-2020 School Committee goals as put forward. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Because our agenda was so light that the transcript didn't even send anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. School committee policies. Our policy um, subcommittee want to update and walk us through these? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get started. Chris, you can chime in if sure, you want. So please. the first three um, are policies where we uh, made a, a, enough of a change that we um, thought they needed to be voted on. Um, so we have there, those here for the first reading. 
a lot, the review group from the agenda are, are policies where we made more than, uh, you know, minor updates, but didn't change the meaning of the policy. And so we want to at least give you a chance to, uh, to, to look at those and comment. And, and if <coughs> everyone agrees, if no one disagrees, then they'll just go on as reviewed. So just taking the first uh, one, policy GBDA. Um, my only note on this one, uh, we were looking to clarify or match the policy to the practice. Um, and I mentioned to the, to, uh, 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 Chris and, and John uh, this afternoon that um, perhaps we should have changed the left the title left the word appointment in the title so I'm proposing that we actually make the title of this the appointment and notification of coaches uh, because it does speak to how they are appointed as well but basically the practice has been that the superintendent appoints the coaches and and uh, and will n notify the committee uh, of, of those appointments going forward so um, that being said is, is, do you have any comments on on the uh, the changes. Oh, and we had we had found that the practice was not to do that for all of the different extracurricular advisor roles, right. and thus there's no need to have it mandated to uh, alert us to those. Well, the the only the only comment I had was in the in the title, which yep. was a, it, it needed. I thought it needed appointments, and I I had said notification of coaching appointments because we're not notifying coaches. I just said notification of coaching appointments, but whatever the title, I, th I think appointments should be in there. As well, so uh, notification of coaching appointments. That's I think keeping appointment into your point though, because it, it, it's because a policy of how they're appointed and right. how we're notified. Okay, right. that's fine. If you want to make it the order of redundancy, it can be the appointment and notification of coach appointments. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to. So whatever, whatever the title is, I'm fine with it. But the, you want to make appointment of the. Uh, uh, Appointment and notification of coaches. Or the I like the appointment and notification of coaches. I yeah, think that I works I think it's well. clear enough. Yeah. Okay. Fine with me. Do you want to make a motion to? One second. Oh, sorry. Okay. Other um, comments? No, I just, if you're going to clean up something small like that, shouldn't it be um, the appointment in the first, second paragraph, the first line, shouldn't it be no later, not not later? Um, Appointment of coaches no later than August, and then why does everyone else November first and February first have a date, but August doesn't have a date? Should we put a date? Like, I don't know. Because the August date always fluctuates. But would you just say that by the end of the month, like August thirtieth? You you first? you could. I just wonder if the. I think you could. Yes. Okay. It was just weird I'm that. I'm just it wondering did. if the summer meeting schedule would ever be such that the last one might be canceled. September one or something. Yeah. Like that. Oh, okay. Okay. I was I'm just, just curious if there's a reason why on. August was just August and the rest. Quite honestly. This is, and I think one of the reasons the policy subcommittee took this one on is this has not been the practice, right. and I think we wanted to codify that this, and you'll see tonight in your packet I have for you a listing of the fall coaches, that that has not been done uh, to the best of my knowledge. So I think yeah. this is a little bit of new, so I can't uh, really okay. speak to why it was that, but I, I think it, it might be to give some flexibility. I think over the years, the school committee has kind of adopted the two meetings a, a, a summer one per month in July and August, but I, I guess maybe if that were to you change. You don't need the same flexibility for February and. I, I mean, I mean, basically, November. you could say no later than August 30th. And, you could, I and think that you could would be. say that and be covered. Yeah. Or and just take out the. You're just looking for consistency. November February? Yeah. Or do you feel like those are needed? Could you say just the first day of school? Well, no, you don't need to get more specific. I was just curious if there was a reason to it. The start of the seasons? Yeah, I think if we were to do the, sp uh, the winter semester, I think you're right. I, I think why is there a date for two and not for the third? This looks weird. So maybe if you said no later than August for fall sports, December for winter sports, and March for spring sports, I think that would give you the, the start flexibility and not conflicting. It gives you a little more time with the with the meeting schedule too, because you yep. wouldn't want a meeting to come. That's all. So uh, the amendments are the title change to appointment and notification of coaches and uh, uh, changing not to no yep. later than August for fall sports, no, uh, December instead of November 1 for winter sports, and March instead of February 1 for spring sports. Yeah, nice. I like that. I think that works. Uh, then I move that the committee accept the for the first reading the uh, policy GBDA as um, um, amended here. Second. All those in favor? Or any of the discussion first? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Next. Sorry. Want to do one, Chris? <coughs> GCA? Uh, yeah. I'm do you want, do you want to put a motion on and then say discussion if anybody has anything? or? Yeah, we can start with a motion. Under that one? So can we have a motion on GCA first? I move that we, uh, that the committee uh, accept the first reading of a policy GCA compensation guides and contracts. A sec a second, anyone? I'll second. Diana. I'll just keep it consistent. Okay. Any discussion <laughs> on this I one? I want to mess with you. I'm not. I'm I won't mess with And we'll have nobody here. We listen. <laughs> This doesn't show any changes. Yeah. Oh, we, oh th this is the one that didn't have a. So the, the oh, reason this is yeah. here is because the policy was here in the book, GCA, but there was no notification, no notation at the bottom that it had ever been approved. Or uh, uh, so while we we might surmise that at some point it was approved, but just never got um, reflected, we thought just to be safe, we'll bring it for the committee. So there's no changes here. We're just bringing it up to make sure that it's properly proved and notated. That's right. Okay. We, we could find no history of this policy, yeah. so. Okay. Is um, I think the motion was to accept the first reading. The, yeah. Okay. Of the of the pol. Yeah, I didn't really s state new or revised, but. Uh, I would just call it new. Yeah, let's just call. It, we would call it a new. Yeah. We can't revise it if we don't have a record of right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't this know is, that it's. I don't know that it's new. Yeah, we, we don't oh. know, but so okay. for the purposes of, of um, making sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, it would be new. We would consider it new. You could. Yeah. Okay. No. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Nope. Okay. So motion for first reading on GCR. I move that we, uh, the committee, accept the first reading of policy of the a change in policy GCR working conditions and benefits. I second the motion. <laughs> it wasn't okay. me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Any <laughs> yeah, I'm briefing everybody. Any discussion on this one? Uh, so yeah, just to just to summarize here, um, we had wanted to clarify that. Um, that within a, a these are for non-certified personnel that, that covers a lot of different types of employees in the district and we wanted to qualify that um, while you don't need to be a member of a union to benefit from the bargaining done by uh, the union nevertheless uh, it matters unit to unit so how one what rights one union or one group gets for for one thing doesn't necessarily apply to other other groups of non-certified personnel that was the intention of it, but we just thought the language could be a little bit clearer. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. And as I said, the, 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 the second group for review, um, I would say if you've reviewed, if no you've vote. read them and you have any comments, please say so. Um, uh, in general, I think if anybody felt, anybody in the committee felt like they should be brought forward for um, uh, a vote. Then we would, then we would do that. Yeah. We would just take it back and then come back with a first reading uh, at the next meeting. But we don't. So, so that's kind of a, any objection would would, qual would move that into a first reading. I don't have an objection per se, mm -hmm. but um, I know in in the past we try to clean up language of his, her. Yep. Do we miss some? on GCI under evaluation non-certified personnel. Mm -hmm. On the last, um, the second to the last, it says this performance review mm -hmm. will be presented for employee of signature right as evidence that yep. he I has agree. seen it. I think it should be said employee <laughs> because you haven't said he, she, GCI. whatever. And that'll, so, that'll keep us from changing it when we change it to something else down the road. <laughs> right, so if, oh. if it's just said, if it's changed from he to said employee, then you don't have to do he, she, he, her. Oh, okay. okay, so. Does that make sense? I agree. Why don't, why don't we go through one by one quickly just to make sure that we're okay. not going back. Yep. Does anybody have anything on GAD? No. no. I don't. GAN. No. I have a few here just in that you changed educator to employee in one place, mm -hmm. but in the third paragraph, educators is still educators instead of employees. 
And then at the bottom of that paragraph, it says help ensure a teacher's effectiveness. Is it an employee's effectiveness? Or, yeah, gotcha. <coughs> I think both of those are fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the changes, did you see that, John? Uh, I, I, heard, I was listening to you, but I can't. I didn't follow in the in the third I, paragraph. Third paragraph, yeah. Third line down, if instruction educators. Yes, I think it should be em employees. Employees must thoughtfully. And this, yes. And then the very bottom line, it says teachers' effectiveness. Is it employees' effectiveness? And then a period at the end. <clears throat> I think it, I think it, I think those are both. Yep. Yeah. Capture this Absolutely. Period. And employees effective. Yes. So a N. Yep. With a period. Thank you. That was my only comments on there. Yep. Yes. Okay. Any other on G A N? Okay. Anybody have anything on G B? No. I do not. G C A D. G C I. Janine pointed out the he she. I got that. And then GCJB. Excellent. No motion needed. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Put this there. <coughs> okay. Budget development calendar. Bernard, Mr. Connolly. Um, thank you. I'm going to address this so I know it seems hard to believe that we're already talking about fiscal year 21 budget calendar but we have it around about this time the last couple of years already looked at the next fiscal year's budget calendar and you can kind of go through the dates here listed um, I will say it's followed the same general calendar and timeline that has seemed to work um, in, previously and this seems to work and coordinate pretty well with the the town's budget process we kind of prepare notes at the finance planning team meetings and both these dates generally have, have worked well and coordinated really well with the, the town um, so you know essentially we're focusing on capital in the month of September um, getting into the the operating budget with administrators and in, in as early as October uh, as you know and um, some of the other key dates in terms of public presentations happen at the beginning of March and the public her hearing happening happening in April with the school committee voting <laughs> the budget on May 4th um, which would meet the timeline that they would be budgets would be due to the select board um, so any questions on any of these dates I have none any else the election comes after um, that, that vote, right? The May 4th? Because it, it's usually like the second. The election of? The, the, the town election. Committee. No, I think it's usually April, right? I don't know. The school committee election? Isn't it April? No. The first week in May. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I should probably note it this yeah. year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you probably should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better to be early than late, though. That's it. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, right. can we have a motion to accept the schedule? I move that we accept the uh, fiscal year 21 budget schedule Second. timeline. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Um, the second part of the next agenda item, sorry, <coughs> which was, that was a two-sided document in your packet. So if you actually flip over, um, in line with the, the school committee goals, which I believe were just endorsed, um, under the financial and, and management portion, um, these goals are very much in line with um, the school committee goals, which we felt certainly made sense to do that. Um, but these would be the the FY fiscal year 2021 budget goals and the areas of focus, um, which again are, are, as you can see, are very much in line with the uh, the school committee goals that I believe were just were just endorsed a, a short time ago and under the financial and asset management and, uh, area of, of budget. Um, so certainly the, the, the focus would be on NRPS 2021 and moving forward with achieving those initiatives, um, a special goal of an area of focus on buildings and grounds and maintenance needs with some, some key operational positions highlighted that we um, did not, were not able to do th through fiscal year 2020 budget. 
capital improvement plan. Um, so we continue to work on that. Uh, we talked about the process of negotiating a new contract with the district's transportation provider or, or that, that recommendation to either extend or, or pursue a new contract. Um, collective bargaining agreements with employee unions that are due to expire at the end of this fiscal year. We talked about the expiration of, of fees and tuitions as a long-term goal, um, exploring areas to reduce energy, particularly solar and LED lighting. Um, and then as an overall goal, um, just garnering support of state and local officials to achieve funding needed to uphold the mission and vision of the school district. Um, and obviously improving a fiscal year 21 budget that adequately meets the district's requirements for optimum student achievement. And then continuing to collaborate closely with members of the finance planning team, in particular select board, finance committee, town administrator, and the town's finance director. So there's a lot of um, overlap here in terms of the school committee goals, but we, we felt that made sense to do to do so, do it that way. And you have you want to you want to vote to accept this, or I think we typically we have, have a vote to yeah. sort of endorse endorse these goals. Okay, we have a motion to accept this. I make a motion to accept the North Reading School Committee fiscal 2021 budget goals as written. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Routine matters. So minutes. We have a motion on the July 29th, 2019 open session slash goals workshop. I'll make a motion to accept the open session goals workshop for July 29th, 2019 as written. Second. Okay. And for discussion, I'll... I'll just say thank you, Mr. Bernard, for taking these notes. You did a much better job than I would have in thank you, putting down what we uh, were discussing. Any, anybody have any changes to that? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Janine, you want to continue on the executive I session? I thank will you. make a motion to accept the mitten, minutes of the executive session of July 29, 2019, as written. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And the last one? I will make a motion to accept the open session minutes of July 29, 2019, as written. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And a budget update, Mr. Connolly. None, none at this time? That's correct. No. Staffing update. Mr. Bernard. Mr. Chairman, thank you. So I have two documents in uh, your packet. The first is a list consistent with our conversation a few minutes ago about coaching appointments. I'm, I'm providing you with a list of the um, fall athletic coaching appointments um, for the upcoming season. We have a full complement of uh, coaches for our robust athletic program. Are there any positions on? on in the uh, in yet. the fall, there are no positions unfilled in coaching. Okay. To the, I would not say the same thing on the second piece of information, but I, I don't say that with any concern. But we do still have a few positions uh, of professional staff that have not been filled, but we are working to fill those. And I, I have every reason to believe we'll have a full complement of staff for our for our opening day with students on September fourth. Since the last time that I provided you a uh, staffing report on, uh, at your last meeting on July 29th, I'm pleased to um, present to you and inform the community that we have hired at the Little School a uh, general paraprofessional in uh, Ms. Lisa Pittori, a special education paraprofessional in our pre-kindergarten program in Ms. Maria Sully, and a new full-day kindergarten teacher in uh, Lauren Kelly. Lauren had been working for us as a paraprofessional at the Batch Elder School, and he, she has now been appointed to a <clears throat> full-time teaching position as a kindergarten teacher. At the middle school, we have hired one additional uh, special education paraprofessional in Julia Barry. At the high school, um, interestingly enough, three of the four new appointments uh, uh, that I'll announce to you this evening are all graduates of our, of our school district. They are Nicholas Granice as a special education paraprofessional, um, Alexandra Pepe as a special education teacher, and Joshua Rocco as a uh, long-term substitute for the entire school year in our digital learning and entrepreneurship program. 
And as well, we have hired a, uh, a long-term substitute, again, also for the year, um, the 1920 school year in Douglas Delore. And in the district, um, we um, were successful in securing a new uh, coordinator of secondary special education to um, fill the vacancy that was left by uh, Maureen Ryan, who moved on, um, was promoted to a, a position in the Woburn uh, public schools um, did a very nice job for us. Um, I wish her well, um, and I'm certainly happy to uh, welcome David Cook um, on as her replacement. He actually began uh, his time in the district um, last Monday on August 19th, so he is he is in place working uh, with us already. Excellent. Always nice to see people go through the school district and want to come back. It is nice to see. Very, it's very nice to see. <laughs> is it? No, I think we're doing that tomorrow. Oh, okay. I, I didn't see it on the future business report, and usually it's listed. <coughs> no, I never, that's for new teachers. Oh. I wouldn't list that for the school committee. For, for security concerns, we no. decided not to tell you this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. Okay. No. They're invited to the luncheon, but not the last <coughs> yeah. tour. That's on. That's on. There we go. Oh. It was at the last meeting. It's on here tonight, too. Is Is there... Any worth noting any of the budget overrides that we've had, or the, the budget concerns we've had, like the membranes at this point in time or not? No, no. because I don't think they're impacting okay. us in a... Okay. Yeah, I think... We have what Mr. Buckley's okay. speaking yeah. about is we had yeah. to, um, mm -hmm. we didn't anticipate the need to replace uh, the three membranes at the wastewater treatment plant. We had hoped to be able to put them on the a list of capital improvements pro projects for fiscal year 2021, but they needed to be um, replaced sooner. And that work has been done. It was done in early July. And fortunately, in our fiscal year 20 budget, we had been able to restore the extraordinary expense part of our maintenance budget, but that money has, has been used already. But yeah. as often is the case, Mr. Connolly has managed that. And so there's no, certainly, you know, we're in good shape with the budget, but it was just, it was an expense that we hoped we wouldn't incur uh, so soon into the fiscal year. Yeah, yeah just, uh, what, what, I mean, one of the concerns I think we had last year was just when something unexpected happens, and so it already happened. and. The entire line item is gone already, so. Um, okay, no bids and donations at this time. Subcommittee updates, right. uh, finance planning. Uh, yes? Did do you want to, I mean, can you just briefly explain this? I was looking at it and I'm like. Sure. There's highlight things that I, the, the three highlights on the longevity that new no that what new what if they, that that's just for us to call attention for for payroll purposes so the um the the teachers contract of which the coaches are um included is when uh, there is a milestone for years of service when a, when a coach um serves in a position for a period of time i forget the increment do you remember what it is up the top is it 15 years yeah 50 yes I think 15, 15 years, years consistent they get a, a longevity increment onto their coaching stipend, and so you have three coaches here that have reached that. So the highlight is, is more internally for us for payroll. Okay. That we don't miss that longevity. It's a $300 longevity increment in addition to their salary for um, the coaching stipend, which is out to the right. And uh, just going down and looking at the names, I recognize a lot of North Reading people. Is yeah, they've been I, there for a while. Um, you know about it. Yeah, there, and there's really the, the, let's see. I can go down the list for you. The Rachel Hanner is, as is, is you know, we contract with Harmeling Physical Therapy. She is new. Um, <clears throat> she's a new trainer for us. Um, Rachel Hanna. Yeah. Laura Debacco is is replacing Robin Foreman as the okay. secretary is retiring. Yep. Dave, of course, uh, Dave Johnson, Eddie Blum, Chuck, yeah. Jim, Eric, Matt, Elias. Mark Bizzignano. So down, now you get down to Josh Rocco that I just announced as yeah. a teacher. He had been an assistant coach in our soccer program about three years ago. Okay. But then given the job he was working, he couldn't, he didn't have the ability to come and be here for the students at like say the 2.30 hour. Okay. But he's now going to have that ability where he's going to be teaching for us. Yep. Um, so he's returning, so to speak. Joe Davis, Peter Kane, Sean Colleen, Kathy Bray, Sarah. Sarah Fitzpatrick is new. Um, another graduate of our of our I district. So. so you see out to the left, Mark Mark Organi. Yep. Um, he's retired, so he's not able to fulfill the um, the coaching job. So Sarah is new. Um, Caitlin O'Donnell is new. She's one of our um, school psychologists at the high school. Okay. Mike Malone, Joanna Lesh, Andrea Slave, Alicia Ward. Everybody else except for no, I'm sorry, Brian McAuliffe is 
new to hockey, but I'll talk to you about that in the winter. Um, okay. he's, been, he's been the golf coach for a few seasons now. All right. So minimal changes. Good to see. But yeah, well, that's another, again, I mean, we had a conversation tonight about, at Policy Subcommittee about um, kind of the, 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 the lack of, the, the stabil stability of our staff in that, you know, we don't see a lot of changes with people. They kind of find, make North Reading a home in a lot of, in a lot of ways. It's so, a good thing. You know, they're not all teachers in the district, but a lot of our coaches are, but it's not always the case. Okay, thank you. Subcommittee updates, finance planning team. I said you me. jumped the gun a little bit there with that <laughs> membering. We did the, he said the coaching before, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll, do you want to give the update? You can give the update. Oh, gosh, no. By all means, go ahead. Oh. We, we met just talking about the opening of the year, the closing of last year. Everything looks okay. And generally, we talked about some of the expenses that are a little bit higher than we anticipated in the beginning. And so just putting everybody, just letting everybody know, but nothing. Nothing that any of the drastic that came from it. We right, right. talked about the Warren articles for October. That'll be on the uh, town town meeting. It doesn't look like it'll be mm. too many. So um, that's a good thing. With that, the only thing that kind of came to mind is uh, to wish Liz yeah. a congratulation. She yeah, has a healthy baby right. girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mia. Yeah. Okay. And then policy subcommittee, which I think just. Uh, yeah, we kind of pushed on into the beginning of the curriculum section uh, of the policy, which is quite uh, detailed. We really only just started to scratch it today, but uh, we've found so far that it's particularly well written and uh, dealing with some tricky and important issues pretty well so far. Okay. And Sorry to not have any bad news. Yeah. I'm more interested. Yeah. But, uh. Okay. The following meetings are the subcommittee schedule. Uh, these are all going to be at the superintendent's conference room, finance planning team on September 13th at 8.15 a.m. Athletic subcommittee, September 18th at 12.30 p.m. Fine arts subcommittee, September 25th at 2.30 p.m. Policy subcommittee, September 25th at 3.30 p.m. And then the NORCAM board of directors meeting on, on September 26th at 7 p.m. at the NORCAM office. Administrative report. Anything to Nothing out? additional tonight, Mr. Buckley. And the correspondence. We have one letter here. We do. Um, I'm, I'm happy to share with you a, uh, a very favorable letter that um, that was received um, on um, the first, second of August. Excuse me. Um, regarding the high school's um, accreditation status, um, it's a, it's you know it's a it's a pretty favorable letter. It's a very favorable letter, and I'm I'm very grateful, as my report to you says, that um, to the administration and the staff. Uh, and all of the constituencies that have a vested interest in the high school for um, doing the work that needed to be done to maintain accreditation, which has great value to our to our town and to our school district and certainly to our high school students because maintaining accreditation through the New England Association of Schools and Colleges uh, indicates that a school has successfully met some pretty rigorous standards and there's a value to students to say that they've graduated from an accredited high school. Um, I've been familiar with, you know, much of my career was in was at the high school level, and so I'm pretty familiar with accreditation. I led the last uh, accreditation review in 2014, March of 2014, just before I became the superintendent. It is a pretty, it's a pretty significant undertaking, and it takes a lot of hands to make the work um, successful. And I'm happy to see that um, the five-year report that that uh, Mr. Lepret submitted last spring. Um, was was viewed favorably by um, the association, and I think you know I don't need to read for you, and I've provided a, a copy to um, to the press that um, you know they're, they're, they highlighted a number of things that have been done um, you know over the over the period of the five years since the review was taken place, um, as I said in 2014, and I think you see only two um, outstanding recommendations that they are requesting a report on um, by January uh, 2nd. I've met already with uh, Mr. LaPrette, the high school principal, and Mr. Hain, the uh, assistant principal at the high school, to talk to them about their plans, and they are, you know, they, they've provided, they're, they're not, I don't, I don't view them as, you know, any, um, anything that can't be accomplished, nor do I, nor do I view them as anything that really, um, you know, is in any way, is in any way um, something that would jeopardize um, our continued accreditation status. In other words, I think they're both very achievable recommendation, and I will expect that they that they be reported on as such um, when that report is submitted by January 2nd. So 
I think it's important for you as a school committee, and by the way, we only have the opportunity uh, periodically to update the database of information around the district, so we have we, we had that opportunity recently to update who the chairman of the school committee is. So, but by the time the next time it rolls around, Mr. Buckley will probably won't be the chairman again. But it's still <laughs> the case, Mr. Webster. But um, you know, I think I hope you take the time to, to to read the letter and give it some thoughtful attention because it is a process that um, requires you know an investment on the part of the community. You know, some of the things that get measured through the accreditation part process are, um, you know, what are the community community funding. Um, you know, the school building project, the high school building project back a few years ago, um, you know, was significant when, when the visiting team came out and saw we were, we were in construction at that time, pretty heavily, heavily in, in, in construction in March of 2014. And, um, you know, there was a significant um, shift in the direction of, I think, you know, our ability to make sure that we were offering a, a state-of-the-art school for our students. And, and you know, we had used the, um, the possibility, and I don't want to be overly dramatic, but the possibility that you know, the building as it existed in the old high school was, was being challenged by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges from its prior accreditation review in, 19, in, excuse me, in um, 2004. And so you know, had, the had the district and had the town not uh, made the decision that it made, it's likely that you know, we might be having a very different discussion had, had, had the community not taken the action that it did to build the new school and thus create a, you know, a 21st century learning environment. So that's just one example. There's also, you know, there are standards around curriculum, there are standards around instruction, around assessment of student work, around leadership and organization, school and community resources for learning. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good process. I think it's one that challenges a school to be reflective of its work and um, there have, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges has come under fire in recent years for, you know, is it a process that's really not, you know, up to snuff in terms of its uh, contemporary nature and to their credit they've gone and looked inward and I think, you know, done some work on their own internally to, to make sure that the process is in fact one that's, you know, fruitful and not just a, you know, kind of a, a checklist if you will and I think that this this is an example where we're kind of on the we're kind of on the, uh, uh, the we're among the the few schools under the new standards given the calendar when we were when we were reviewed that we're that we're successfully meeting the new standards for accreditation I think is something to be to be highlighted as well. So, thank you very much. I'm certainly not a professional educator, but suspect that losing accreditation is probably not good. Uh, oh, it seems it, like a bad thing. It would be it would be a, a pretty a pretty bad thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and on a side note, I would say that I noticed in the, there was an article in the Globe this week about the cost of current school building projects and how high they've so gotten. I saw that. I read that. Yeah. And I couldn't help but think, thank goodness we did this building when we did, because it might yeah. be twenty percent mm -hmm. or more more expensive now. It's Just the same the exact same project. Right. Are you suggesting we uh, take on another building? <laughs> I'm suggesting that we're, I'm glad we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was a buy one get one. Yeah, I, think, I think you're right. Those some of those numbers were staggering. Yeah, and they're and not necessarily uh, some of them were big schools, could big dist you know big uh, yeah, districts, but uh, not all, not all of them. They were all high. Yeah. yeah. No, I think wow. we were we were right at that point where I think it really Just starting. Like a, we, a year we saw right some increase. We saw it in the bidding process. In the bid, we did. But we were about a year away, Janine. Right? We were we were close to we were on that the tipping upswing, point, which is why we had yeah. to go back. Yep. Yeah. Second time, right? Reinforced. It was just coming. Yeah. But I think your point about you know twenty percent or so might not have it's easily. I think it would be an easy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyone else want to have comments before we try to close? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Teasing. Oh, so. should we add up to the comment times? <laughs> <laughs> Future business. August twenty seventh tomorrow. There's a new teachers orientation luncheon. If anyone would like to come get some lunch at the high school. September 3rd, if people are around, that's the opening day meeting with the faculty and staff here at the Performing Arts Center. And again, I think Ms. Imbriano is going to speak for about a half hour during that presentation. <laughs> I was just going to say, you, you got to come to hear okay. Scott talk. Um, September 9th at 6.30 p.m. in the Distance Learning Lab at North Reading High School, we have a meeting. And on September 23rd, we have a meeting here as well. So if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Well done. Unanimous. 720.